the meeting of the committee for Township of Hamilton, Monday, September 17, 2018. Please rise for the saluting of our flag. John, pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting has been provided pursuant to the New Jersey Open Public Meetings Law <coughs> by posting a notice of this meeting on the bulletin board in the municipal building and by publication in the press of Atlantic City on January the 5th, 2018 and the Atlanta County Record on January the 10th, 2018. Mr. Gishard? Present. Mr. Kurtz? Present. Mr. Slink? Here. Mr. Silva? Here. Mayor Shanker? Here. <coughs> We have a moment of silence for private reflection. I would ask you to please keep the DeFeo family in your your uh, the DeMeo the, the DeFeo family in your prayers. Um, Rich uh, passed away last week. Um, he lost his son not too long prior to this, and it's been a just a, a very bad time for the family. So if you could keep them in your thoughts and prayers, it'd be much appreciated. We have one addition, 7E, to the late agenda items may be considered. So moved. Here. We have a motion to accept it. Yeah, so moved. Second. We have a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those aye. opposed, the ayes have it. Michael, early, early comment from public? Uh, no one has signed up, Mayor. All right, thank you. <clears throat> Discussions, formal actions may be taken. A, a public hearing a five-year tax exemption abatement. Dustin and Bronca Tanzik, block number 730, lot number 12, 207 Lenape Avenue. Michael, would you give us a little background on this, please? Um, well, the, or is, is the applicant here? No. For, no? No. I know, um, I know the model. We're supposed to put right. testimony on the record. I'm not sure. I have to defer to Bob. Suggest to carry. On the table. Have the applicant invited to the next meeting. Okay. So I'll accept a motion to uh, table this until the next meeting when the um, applicant second. can be notified. So moved. A motion. She second. Second. Judy. Judy. Second. Yeah. Okay. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed. Ayes have it. B, resolution approving request for five year. This is the same, the, second the same one. one's the second one. Do we have to do another motion to, to table that or are we, uh, are we gonna move on? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. No. no. Do we have to get a motion to table this too, Bob? No. Okay. It's all moved. All right, we have- Second. <clears throat> We have a motion and a second to table the resolution approving request for five-year tax exemption abatement with historic district for renovation of a home and construction of garage on block 730, lot 12. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 The ayes have it. C, announcement by the solicitor regarding Tavistock bond litigation. Mr. May solicitor. I, may I have your permission to stand over here? You may. Especially since you have a tie on. <laughs> members of the committee, members of the public, um, at the last two meetings I made this announcement. This will be the final time I do so. In the rear of the courtroom and in the bulletin board on the foyer is a notice with respect to the hearing on the settlement of the Tavistock bond litigation. Uh, I just wanted to put on the record and to the public a third time that that hearing will be held on September 21st before the Honorable James Savio in the Civil Courthouse in Atlantic City at 2.30. His courtroom is on the third floor. Anybody here or anybody watching this or anybody reading those announcements are invited to come and testify either for or against the settlement. Um, the settlement has been laid on the record here many times. The committee has approved it. I am advised that the Tavistock Board, uh, the Condominium Association Board, has approved it. 
the um, notice of settlement, which is posted back there and in the foyer, has also been sent certified in regular mail to all of the current unit owners on the rolls at the Tavistock development. So we are going to have that hearing. This is our final announcement. It has also been published in the newspaper. There's no other way that I could think of that this could have been more notice provided to the public or to the folks at Tavistock um, so that what will happen will, will be that if in fact the judge approves the settlement, that will be in, <clears throat> excuse me, in the form of an order of the court, which under the settlement agreement I have the authority to record. Once it's recorded, it gives notice to all future potential homeowners so that someone who purchases after the settlement agreement will be on notice of it and bound by it. And that's all going to happen Friday. And I'll report back. I, I'll report in the form of a letter to each of you, um, but I'll report back at the next meeting as to the conclusion of that hearing. Bob, do you think uh, any members from the uh, employees from the bonding company will be there? I don't think so. I think their attorney will be there. Um, the bonding company we have settled with long ago with respect to the $650,000 that they're going to pay to do the public improvements in Tavistock. Uh, I expect that Mr. Wishnick, who is counsel for um, the association, will be present. And I'm hoping that the board present, president, Mr. DeChico, will be present. The court may want testimony from him. Um, or they, the court may accept the representations of counsel as to what his client has done by way of approval. Good. Thank you. Question. You, you uh, indicated that letters went out to the Tavistock um, uh, owners. Was that recent? Yes. Uh, within the last week or two? The only reason I ask is because <laughs> some people, there are some people over there that were asking whether uh, they were invited to attend, and there, there's Tavistock residents, so I... I just wondered whether the obligation of the condominium board association was to send letters to each and every owner regular mail and certified mail i have seen the affidavit of mr de chico indicating that and and someone from his staff um, indicating that regular and certified mail went to each person mm -hmm. and i received a <clears throat> email on my phone as i walked in the door here tonight which is a list of the green cards that you get when you sign for a certified mail, uh, return receipt mail. I obviously haven't had a chance to compare it to the list yet. So they were notified by regular mail and certified mail, certainly within the last week, probably longer than that. In addition to that, it has been published in the paper. Do any of my members have questions? Uh, you, you mentioned that uh, Mr. DeChico <laughs> may or may not be there and the court may have want him to testify are they letting him know that so my that's my point is is i don't want to see you go to court and the judge say i, I need to speak with this gentleman that's not no here. i i sent two letters to my adversary saying it would be probably a very very good idea for him okay. to be there or somebody from the board okay now judge savio may say to my adversary um, can you represent on the record that your board took a vote and approved the settlement? And that would be an appropriate way to do it as well. Okay. But I have made the suggestion in two separate letters. Okay. Um, I was kind of hoping he'd be here tonight, but I'll follow up tomorrow. Okay. Thanks. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Uh, we'll move on to D, American Legion Building Redevelopment. <coughs> Michael? Yes, Mayor. Um, I wanted to break the ice on this project, um, try to get something started. I spoke with Jim Malley and he said that since we declared it as an area in need of rehabilitation, we can just select a broker. Okay. Um, we don't have to do any RFPs or RFQs or anything. Um, I spoke with George Fye, he's a local realtor broker, um, and he he's rather excited to work with us on it. Okay, good. If we if he, if it's okay, so I would, really what I'm asking for tonight is just you're okay to meet with him and try to come up with a plan, something to the effect of we want to sell the building to someone with the caveat that within six months, a year, they have to fix it up according to historical standards uh, and get it back on the tax rolls. Um, that, that's kind of what I was thinking. I was, obviously, I need his advice on 
how much should we ask for it? You know, how much time we should give them? Those kind of things. But is that a good parameter um, for the committee that I start conversation on this with? Is is there any restrictions on permitted use there? Because I'm I'm sure somebody's going to want to do something with it. Um, just whatever the zoning is, I would defer to Phil if he can tell you the permitted uses. Mayor, what uh, the zoning allows for is uh, all the uses we allow in the village commercial, Main Street commercial. Okay. So. Uh, in addition, it also makes some provisions for not only uh, residential as part of a commercial establishment, but even two-family residential on the property. So we, t we tried to broaden it out and in, in putting it together in the plan to, you know, Mm -hmm. Make it as appealing as possible. Okay, very good. Thank you, Mike. Is the uh, uh, as, with all this bad weather, is the tarp on the roof okay, intact? Everything. I think they just put a new one on a couple weeks ago. Yeah. Okay. The old one okay. Yeah. Tore. Thanks. Is it fair to say that you uh, you think you'll have this meeting with the uh, broker consummated within the next, let's say, two months? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Well, you're going to need an agreement from the committee. Retain. Yeah, I, I don't know how he'll want to get paid. I'll have to find that That's out. Why don't, why don't we give you the permission to do so, and then then we can do this again. All right. Yep. So all all the uh, chair will uh, accept the motion to. Uh, Wait a minute. You need him to tell you what the commission's going to be first. I I would suggest that Michael meet with him, find out what the percentage commission is going to be, and then. You can at least do the preliminary steps, Michael, getting him involved, looking mm -hmm. at the building, and at the next meeting, award a uh, get it on the agenda. Okay. He can do that without any without motion or just go ahead, have a good time. Okay. All right. All right. Good. good Thank you. Very good. <laughs> oh, boy. All right. Public hearing adoption of ordinances. A, ordinance 1885-2018. An ordinance amending Article 2, Chapter 66 of the Code of the Township of Hamilton, providing an annual, annual salary increases for certain employees. <clears throat> Michael, this is with the uh, increases for uh, township employees? It's for non-aligned employees. Non-aligned? Okay. Um, and it's consistent with the increases that we provided to the, to the Teamsters contract. Okay. And certain employees means it excludes the committee and the lifeguards. <laughs> so, but other than that, it's all non-union. Anyone have any questions? Um, the word certain employees, should that be, uh, I, I know you said non-aligned, but should that be in the, uh, um, you know, uh, the ordinance or uh, that we vote on? Well, the certain people, certain. In, it's in there. Yeah, it, it's there, and the, also the um, it's subsection A, which is everybody <laughs> but those two, the committee and the the lifeguards. So the the section that it's amending excludes it. I see it. Okay. okay. This is a public hearing. I'll open the uh, floor to the public. If anybody would like to speak on this issue. Motion to close the public portion. Second. second. A motion and motion and a second to close the public portion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed. Um, we adopt this. I'll move ordinance 1886-2018. I'll second it. We have a motion and a second to adopt or the ordinance 1885-2018. All those in favor sig oh, never mind. Roll call vote, Roll Rita. Call. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. And Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and adopted. Okay. Ordinance 1886-2018, an ordinance amending Exhibit A, Section 1, Article 2 of Chapter 66, Maximum Salaries. This goes hand in hand with what we just did, yes? Yes, in order for certain employees to receive the raise, their maximum salary per ordinance has to be increased. Okay. Very good. This is a public hearing. I'm going to open the floor to anybody in the public that would like to speak on this. Move the close May I make a comment board. on this? Sure. The, uh, Can, maximum us, Judy, salaries. Judy, can you hold on just a second? We'll oh. close the public portion. Go ahead, Roger. Move to close the public portion. Second. We have a motion and second to close the public portion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? Judy. 
Uh, yeah, I wanted to just clarify uh, maximum salaries. Um, it doesn't mean that the the people are going to go to the maximum salaries. It allows them to c get the uh, wage increase. So um, they they couldn't get it if they didn't increase the maximum salary. That's, that's exactly right. Yes. Okay. So, yeah. Okay. Um, do we have a motion to accept this ordinance? So moved. Second. A motion and a second. Rita, can I have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and adopted. <clears throat> Number five, introduction of ordinances. We have none. Number six, awards, bids, rejection of bids, contracts, and change orders. A, resolution rejecting all bids for new office and laundry room, bid 2018-04A. <clears throat> Mike, you want to explain a little background on this, please? Yes, the um, this project, the bids came in well over the amount that we uh, budgeted for it. Um, Brett and I have a meeting Wednesday morning with the architect to um, reset the the goals. We want to eliminate the office and um, reduce the size of the extractor and the dryer to a more appropriate size for our, our use and see if we can rebid it and come in closer to our budget. Okay. Any questions, comments? I'm a, I make that uh, resolution rejecting all bids. Second. Second. A motion and second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. V, resolution authorizing participation in the South Jersey Power Cooperative and accept the pricing and acknowledge the contract between the County of Camden and various suppliers for electric generation supply service. Michael, a little background, please. Uh, it's a co-op that the township's been a member of for years. <clears throat> We buy some of our electric through them at a little bit discounted rates. Okay. Uh, question? <clears throat> I don't know how much it is. We do business with them. Are there alternatives uh, to are there other co ops that uh, provide the same service? I have not explored that. I just stayed with the one we've been using. I guess these are the local ones so for that perspective. Well, they, they allow um, Atlantic County municipalities in it. Okay. We have a motion. I'll move that resolution. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. C. Resolution awarding a bid 2018-07A chiller replacement to Gaudelli Brothers not to exceed $106,000. That's pretty self-explanatory, I assume? Yes. We budgeted 150, so there are some savings okay. that that's good. Move the resolution. That's good. Do you have any questions? Rodney? I'll move the resolution. I'll second it. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Uh, Rita, can we get a roll call vote for this, please? Yes. Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Uh, I'm going to abstain from this vote due to the fact that I work in this business and my <clears throat> company may or may not be competition at some point. Uh, four with Four yes, one abstention. Motion carries. Thank you. D, resolution awarding a bid 2018-09, 2018 road program to Landberg Construction, not to exceed $605,283.90. Yes, this, oh. You're gonna talk about it, Craig? No, I was just gonna say it's within the amount that we have. Okay. Um, it, it also allows for the two grant projects that we'll have some matching funding on them, so we had to reserve some money. Okay. But we have enough to do this. And I just want to add that uh, um, we're very excited about this road program this year. We were able to get a significant number of streets involved. Uh, uh, Steve, did a, our, our engineer, did a great job of uh, helping us identify them, uh, making some little rides and ride around looking at these streets and uh, it's uh, really encouraging to see it come together and get the work started. So I'm very excited about that. Yeah, and keep in mind too, we got those two grants too. 
yes. for West Jersey and got the other one for Cotillion Boulevard, which probably almost equal this same amount of money. So yes. it's a pretty significant road program. Um, not to say that this is not good. I was just suggesting that in the future, um, Third Street really has a lot of bumps and lumps in it. So to look at that next time. <sighs> okay. We have a resolution. I'll make that motion. I'll second it. A motion and a second. Rita, can we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Gishard? Yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carry. We move on to the consent agenda. I'll make a motion to approve the consent agenda items A through E. I'll second it. A motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Just so uh, if you don't mind, I just want to make note of the fact that the uh, green team. the uh, <clears throat> approval of a green team to send a letter to commercial establishments offering free signs reminding customers to bring or, or uh, purchase reusable bags. It's something that uh, is simple, but hopefully it will help with the, with the use of uh, reusable bags. Okay. Thank you, Rodney. Uh, we'll move on to number nine, approvals. Minutes of September 4th, 2018, regular meeting. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, the ayes have it. Payroll and bills. Bill list total $1,812,641.42. So moved. Second. second. We have a motion and a second. Rita, can we have a roll call vote, please? Mr. Gishard? <clears throat> yes. Mr. Kurtz? Yes. Mrs. Link? Yes. Mr. Silva? Yes. Mayor Shanker? Yes. All yes and carry. Move on to the reports. Mr. Administrator? Um, yes, I, I do have one item. Um, received a call late this afternoon from the attorney um, that we hired for our cable TV franchise. And he confirmed that the one item and their new offer to us does not include the senior discount. Um, that we have in place but the one that they're offering is as good or better than what we have in place so he's asking do we want to go ahead and move forward with settling it now or do we want to wait we have three years probably two and a half now um, until closer to the end or do we want to while we have him on board want to go ahead and, and and move forward with it so the offer is better now without the senior discount right it's it's about the same senior citizen discount if not a little bit better he said that what they, about the rest of it well the rest of the terms are pretty straightforward he's increased our request for thirty thousand dollars for new equipment for the school for our television station okay and he's hoping to get that additional money that instead of they i think they pretty much consented to the 25 something but he upped it to 30. um so he's he believes he could start the paperwork and go ahead and get it done um while he's on board or we could put it off for a few years and whatever you want to do, because we have two, about two and a half years left in the franchise. Uh, two questions. The senior citizen discount, what is what is that? I I don't know the amount of it. You have to. Didn't ask him the details of it. He just was explaining well, that. Well, we senior citizens are very interested yes. in that. <laughs> it's probably not much. <laughs> and, and you can't make a certain amount of money. A lot of choices. Of course. Make up for it. <laughs> That's a good question. Uh, do we need to uh, move on this to just if you want to we, we already hired him to get it done okay but we had postponed it a little bit because we thought we were going to lose something with the senior citizen discount but if you're okay with me moving forward just consensus is okay with me I can, updated for sale. yeah that's he's our attorney on it so okay yeah. well, we sure. want to do a straw vote to see whether we want to move forward um, that's or we're just going to leave the attorney go. All right. We'll let him handle it. Okay. Uh, Anything? Just, uh, I'm sorry. I had I have another question. <laughs> the uh, thirty thousand dollars. So the twenty five plus the five. You said additional. Well, for what period of time is that? Well, I think they'll give us the money up front. And for that's for the length of the contract. Yeah, it's how? a one time payment. Yeah. And how long is the contract? Uh, Fifteen. I don't know if it has the 10-year renewal on it like the old one did, or it's probably at least 15 years. 
That's a long time for 30,000. Did I have any shorter terms? I can ask. Hmm? I can ask. I... Yeah, because you're talking about 2,000 a year, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I only have That's to it. sign up for two years. <laughs> yeah, it's a pretty good is it, is it is it possible to get so much per year? This is a this is a pretty good chunk of money that we're getting. It's all right. Not, all right. It's not insignificant, and they're only going to go so high. Okay. You, you're not negotiating with a whole lot of power. Right. So, <laughs> yeah. Well, we get two percent on top of that that we get as an annual okay. payment. Very good. Anything else, Mike? No, sir. That's all. Thank you, Mayor. Mike, I have one question for you. The uh, the improvements to the Lundy Center, where are we at on that? The, um, and Phil can correct me if I'm wrong. We had a project to redo the doors for handicap accessibility. Yep. We, in this new round, we applied for and we have been approved for um, adding some handicap parking up along the front of the building. Okay. Since they were such small projects, we were going to propose that we just do them both together the next year when the funding comes through. Because they're just both real small projects. The next year, we yeah. allocated money last October. Well, we haven't we haven't received the money for this year. The second one, right? Okay. That'll probably be next year before we can do it. So we're not Thank going you. ahead with the first one. That's our. That's what we would do. That's what we recommend. So I, I I'm not I don't understand why we don't just go forward with the first project. We you want us to? We can. Hmm? If the committee wants us to, we can. It was just so small that we were going to wait and lump it with the other one but we can there's well, one's that doorway that entrance and the other one's a parking lot improvements right so i don't know what one has to do with the other when when do we expect the funding for we the, had the funding so we had the funding uh, for the first about one right the additional funding yeah we had the funding for the uh, first round the, right. the second uh normally we receive the the notice of funding um usually November or December of the year, uh, and it's, it's in the program from the county. It's just the, the formal word coming down from the federal government usually occurs right around the uh, beginning of the federal fiscal year. So, so that's this year. Or, ordinarily, about. you know, it's scheduled to be October 1st, but they've been usually three months behind with by the time they actually get it out to, to the county. So. But, but seeing as we have the funding, we could go ahead with that first part. Yes, we could. Yes. Yeah, I think that makes sense. Okay. We'll do it. Okay. We're on the same page? Hmm. We are now. Yeah, thank you. Uh, do we have to put a bid out for that or no? Uh, yeah, I would assume so. Yeah, it's just like any other it's project. It's probably a bid or quotes. I'm not sure of the amount. So. Mm -hmm. Okay. <laughs> thank you, Michael. Anybody else have any questions? Good. Move on to our solicitor. Nothing to report. Thank you. Our engineer, yep, who engineering. always has something to report. <laughs> <laughs> I'm pretty excited about the 2018 road program. Yeah. There's a lot of roads. There's uh, four sections of Babcock, eight other roads. It's an aggressive program. Um, I've been in contact with Ken Lamberg, and uh, now that we have a resolution, I I'm going to meet with him tomorrow with a contract. He'll get the surety bond together. He'll get it back to me. Um, my next step is to schedule a pre-construction meeting, which I, I'm planning on, on doing that this week. I'll reach out for Wade Smith. Um, I, I want to be uh, especially cautious with these roads because there's a lot of traffic. You think about Kate's Roads and, and Denmead, Oakcrest, you know, the, the exit road for Oakcrest Drive. And there's a lot of traffic on Babcock. And I just want to make sure we have, you know, the uh, safety is, comes first. So I want to make sure. Uh, we're all on the same page with that. So I'll, I'll schedule a pre-construction meeting this week and we'll, and we'll get started with that. Next item, Buffalo Pike Associates. I spoke to Matt Oates today. They, they actually had uh, some of the trades working Sunday, yesterday on the building out there. So you know. uh, and, and I inquired about that today when I spoke to him and he said that they want to get open for the holidays. So uh, No names yet? No. Well, for the other part we'll, we'll, we'll see their names are coming <laughs> names are so, coming okay well, to tease is yeah, it? Yeah. How many, okay uh, six stores there's the, the building three under construction the right one. now there's three stores there's a starbucks on one end a mattress store and still uh, no sign tenant for the the, uh, the middle the center <laughs> the middle. But, but they will be starting on the second pad site that that's um, they, they've sent me administratively revised 
site plans. They want to make some changes. So that, that is a certainty. The second building is, is soon to go to construction. Um, Outback Steakhouse started construction today. They started demolition on the site at Outback Steakhouse. Um, Artist Walk's been, there's been a lot of uh, sales of, of homes, new home construction in, in Artist Walk. They want to begin phase eight, which is uh, the next section, phase eight, are, are actually uh, 12, 12 more homes. We, we, we've signed off on uh, site inspections on four new COs since the committee meeting two weeks ago. So there's a lot of residential construction that seems to be picking up in the town. Oh, that's good. Um, municipal emergency generator Janney Electric this morning uh, applied the sealant to, to that uh, indented part of the fuel tank out in the uh, parking lot outside here. So. Um, that work has, has begun. We'll, we'll keep an eye on it to see how it, it, it holds up through the weather. And, and um, you know, we're pretty optimistic. He looks like he did a pretty good job out there on the repairs. Um, we issued uh, no, no new street opening permits were, were issued in the last two weeks. It seems like South Jersey gas may be slowing down with, with all these street openings that they've been doing for the last two years. So it's wow. good because they're, they're, we have a very long list of punch list yeah. items to, to do some repairs. Yeah. Um, at the last committee meeting, I was asked about the uh, Underhill Park Bridge, and I sent an email out to everybody. Um, the, the, the bridge is going to be replaced in the spring of 2019. It's, it's going to be done by the Public Works Department of the county. Um, I inquired about the length of time to replace that bridge, and, and it, it could be six to eight weeks. We, we, they could be down. So I'm, I'm a little concerned about that timetable, but. As they get a little bit closer, I'll communicate with, with the county and, and, and see if we could, I don't know, shorten that timetable. That's going to be a long time for that bridge to be, you know. You said bridge. 2019. Is there yeah. a time? Is yeah, there they're a, saying March, April 2019. Yeah, and I thought they said, too, that the bridge uh, by the dam was going to be uh, started in 2019 also. Hopefully they don't take down too many of our uh, roads uh, not during that period time. of time without uh, you know causing a lot of uh, problems for our uh, traffic I'll, I'll stay on Would top you of the yeah, schedule try if you can if you can pin them down to a date on that Steve I, I mean I know there's a way to get around the the bridge when it's out but that intersection at 40 and 50 and that road's going to back all the way around by Wheaton you know that at certain times so obviously uh, we have to just hope that is right. Now the bridge that they're going to do on Underhill, that's a wooden bridge, right? It, it is. And, and the one concern I have about that, I, I inquired about, uh, will there be a change to that bridge? And, and what they're waiting on are the environmental permits, and they said that they cannot increase the diameter of the pipe through there. Um, they, they can't increase the flow downstream. So, and I think when that bridge failed, it's failed because the road is overtopped in that location, yes. I think. So whatever they're designing isn't going to solve the problem of you know water overtopping the road in that location wow. well that's that's one problem the other problem is i i don't know how many times i think while i've been here I've been, maybe this is the third time that bridge has been rebuilt and it seems like within a couple of years it's riding over it is horrible <laughs> uh, i'm just wondering you said it's going to be wood again uh, i don't know whether they made any improvements in there i'm not sure of the the, the material um I, I, I can request a copy of the plans and, and take a look at it. I, I could review that and... Well, if they're going to do it themselves, it's almost like when they did the one on Holly Street about uh, 18 or 20 years ago, I remember, and uh, that was wooden. They had it down for a couple of weeks. Usually, if it's the bridge section of the county, they work as quickly as possible. But, but uh, Rodney's right. If, if, it's, if it's wearing in at a shorter notice, then they've got to take a good look at what they're putting down there and how long it's going to last. And I'm concerned about the if they can't increase the flow of water uh, downstream. I mean that that house was underwater. They were had water in their living room there, and uh, I was concerned that uh, the water was held up, not increasing it. Just let the original amount of flow that did go through come back, because I think it was restricted. Is what probably caused some of that flooding there. I, mean, I don't know if Brett knows any more than what I've been able to uncover. Right. 
But they could do some work on the bed of it and getting rid of some, like you said, down trees and stuff. That was my concern. They just don't fix the bridge and leave. And the same issues there with a new bridge, you know, as far as the water getting by or going around or getting stopped up and causing flooding, you know. I, I'll continue to communicate with the county and, yeah. and I'll see what I can, you know, find out and I'll yeah. report back to the committee. Thanks, Steve. And the Thank last item I have is um, um, we talked about the storage unit at Underhill Park the yeah. last committee meeting, the 8 by 40. Uh, mm -hmm. Phil and I did a, just a very brief zoning analysis. I know Bruce Dry inquired about, you know, zoning. Yes, and, he did. And it appears to be something that can be done administratively. It, it, it may need a foundation because it's, it's 320 square feet, but I'm I've, I've been speaking to the MLAA and I'm planning on, on meeting with them real soon to site it, locate it, give it a good elevation that it's not in a low point. Um, and I'll let the committee know when I'm out there in case anybody wants to meet with us. That'd be good. Yes, I would like yeah, to. I would like that too. Yeah, yeah so would I. Okay. And that concludes <laughs> my report. Anything else? Okay, thank you, Steve. Uh, we'll move on to township committee members. Judy? Well, <clears throat> what has been in the news uh, this full week has been the devastation down in South Carolina and North Carolina and um, a lot of information about uh, dams and uh, the breaching of dams and and I'm thinking well I think our dam is pretty pretty secure would you make a comment on that uh, Brett? <laughs> what? I'll say it's secure it's Okay. You you take care of all the. I understand you lowered the uh, the water in the lake. Was that in the anticipation of? Not for this. Not for the power changes, but the rain that we had last week. Mm. Yeah. Well. Um, we have our uh, wine and food festival coming at Lake Lenape, and I think, praise the Lord, it's going to be sunny, and it'll be nice a nice day, and uh, everyone will have a great time. Um, I just, in a personal uh, um, comment, uh, my husband was scheduled down in Florence, at this Monday and Tuesday and I said it looks like that storm or, or the hurricanes come into Florence I said don't you think they should let you go he works for the FAA doing systems analysis for the airport well once they closed the airport and they couldn't get in then they gave him the go ahead to head up north which it took him 10 hours and it was very secure. But I thought, well, it'll take 20 by the time they, uh, you know, with all the traffic moving either west or north. So it, it, it worked out for us, but I really feel very badly for all the devastation that was done. So that's it. Thank you, Judy. John? I just wanted to touch on uh, uh, this weekend, uh, the historical society in town had the art in the park. Uh, they were very fortunate to have the sun pop out. It was a beautiful day. They had a significant number of vendors. The crowd was a little light, maybe because of all the weather that we had that preceded that. Uh, but it was uh, it was a nice day, and uh, and uh, uh, they they did okay. The vendors did okay. So it's always good to see things going on in the middle of town. And uh, uh, they were happy with the results. And as Judy said, the uh, Wine Fest is uh, uh, this coming weekend. Uh, the, Mer the Merchants Association is preparing for that starting even tomorrow. Uh, this year, one of the uh, newer things is that the, uh, there will, we don't have to uh, fence in a, a, guard, a, uh, a wine garden area any longer because the rules have changed and the entire park uh, anywhere that you want to sit with family and and uh, and enjoy uh, wine that's purchased there, you can do that under the new regulations. Uh, actually, we have the coordinator for the wine fest, Mike Dougherty, right in here. He's from Blunt Force Productions, and he's helping us out with our event. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, Mike, do you have anything that you'd want to 
real quick to say? I can come up during public comment. Oh, public yeah. comment. Yeah. Okay. Great. Thank Thanks. But it's really, uh, it's really uh, uh, going to be a great event, and tickets are on sale. Uh, uh, you can get them on a lot of them on right on the website, uh, online at the different uh, of different uh, vendors, and also uh, uh, you can purchase them at County Seat Florist in town, and I believe Fred Nebel's uh, Auto Service Center also. Uh, so we're looking forward to having a good time, and uh, everybody come out if you can. And uh, that's about it. Thanks, Lord. Thank you, John. Roger? You know, I was just reviewing the, um, the police department report, the monthly activity report for August, and um, the amount of calls that you get are just sometimes right off the chart. You had almost 4,600 calls for service in the month of August. And year to date, you're looking at over 38,000. I mean, that's a lot of activity. Um, the nice thing about it is the other day, I don't know if you read it in the voice of the people, someone had commented about how they appreciated lowering the speed limit, I mean, raising the speed limit, lowering the speed limit on Cades Road to make it all uh, contiguous from one end to the other. Normally you don't see that, and I think that was real positive. Uh, <clears throat> and another reason why I'm here, we don't forget that on uh, October the 3rd, you have coffee with a cop. Hmm? Again, right? <laughs> Chief, do you do you ever attend any of them? Yeah, I'll be in the next one. At Festival Mall, it's October the 3rd from 9 to 11. Oh, so it's a festival? No, I... <laughs> <laughs> donut shop, I think. Are you saying it's a festival? I think it's a festival. Uh, at the festival shopping center there by Acme. Donut, uh, Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin' Donuts. Dunkin Donuts. Oh, at Dunkin' Donuts. <laughs> uh, oh, I said that. Oh, Dunkin' Donuts, okay. See, um, the other thing this weekend, along with the mayor and uh, the committeeman Kurtz, we had cut the ribbon for the new business that opened up next to uh, McDonald's, the, the liquor store there. And um, obviously, uh, they look like they're starting to do very well. Uh, another thing that's coming up this September the 27th from 1 to 4 p.m., for those of you that haven't been over the Recovery Centers of America at the Lighthouse, they put a phenomenal addition onto that place. I was there when they uh, opened up the other one, and uh, we were able to tour around this one. But for those of you that aren't familiar with it, it would be good to just take a, uh, a few minutes, if you can, to go over there, because that place is phenomenal, what they offer and what they have and the professionals in that facility. So that'll be on the 27th. Um, pretty much, I think, uh, when you look at everything going on, I think we're all concerned about uh, the businesses that are coming into our community and the amount of traffic. Uh, I know you're going to have your hands full with the road program, Steve, and I know you're excited about it, So, but I'm hoping that if the weather uh, holds, you'll be able to get it in before, or at least by <coughs> January, so <coughs> real positive to look forward to, and thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Mayor. Thank you. Rodney? Yes. Um, I just want to follow up on, uh, on uh, John Kurtz's statement about tickets. Uh, is there any discount offered if the tickets are bought early? Uh, yes, actually. Uh, you can get a break on them, and you can online, too. I, and he'll explain that more when he gets up for public comment. Oh, okay? See, see if you, if you can hold on for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> that, too. Oh. <laughs> All right. Very good. Um, I... Uh, I, I didn't get the word about uh, uh, canceling the 9-11 ceremony, but I, I don't know how many people uh, here were planning to go. But I know we had a, a nice ceremony planned. It came out on Nixle, were, right? It went out. It went out at 520. Yeah, it was, and, see, that, he tried we, to hold to the very last minute. Yes, I know. I understand. And uh, I, I'm, I'm impressed with how effective Nixle is because uh, there were only a few of us out there. So everybody else that was in the know, I guess, uh, uh, saw, uh, read the Nixle. But uh, that's, that's a shame because I know they had a, a, a very nice ceremony planned. Um, I missed the MLA meeting, MLMA meeting also, uh, which was canceled, I guess, John? The normal MLA? Uh, MLA no, it, no, it was held at the library. It was announced at the past right. previous okay. meeting. All right. All right, I missed that. Um, the Art in the Park, un unfortunately, uh, I was out uh, with the VFW coin drop 
dodging cars in the sun. Uh, and I certainly thank uh, anyone who contributed to that, those, those coin drops. I know in the case of the VFW, and I'm sure the others, they, uh, they were a, a needed source of, uh, source of revenue. Uh, just wanted to remind you of the, uh, the uh, Senior Citizens Advisory Committee. Uh, what is it called? Exposition in the Mall? Senior uh, Expo, yeah. Senior Expo on, the, uh, on September 29th. Um, also, just for your information, that uh, <clears throat> four, what is it, 4.2 cent increase in the gas tax, uh, I inquired as to whether that means that we may be able to get more money for our road program and no such luck. It's just reimbursing uh, um, a pot that uh, th there's been no increase in the amount that's, that's, uh, that's funded in spite of inflation, so it's really not going to have any, any increase in funds in any, any areas that affect us. Um, finally, um, the, the administrator got a call about noise at Hamilton Walk, and I don't know how many here may have experienced that. Uh, apparently there's been noises that have continued, well, they, they sound like cannons, and apparently they even shake the windows, at least some people have claimed of their establishments, and it's something that's going on for, for a fairly long period of time. It was a mystery as to what it was coming from. We did a little investigation, and apparently it's, um, and I need to confirm this, but it seems to be coming from some, uh, uh, for lack of a better word, uh, the, the, the demolitions or ex explosions that the uh, Transportation Security Agency um, initiates. And um, I'll have to look into it further to see. Is anybody here affected by, by that? No. Okay, well, that's good. That's all I have. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Rodney. <clears throat> uh, I'm going to pass on my comments. I don't want to repeat everything everybody else has said. So I'm going to open it up to uh, public comment. Good, good, good evening. My name is Linda Gentile. I'm the owner of Shore Animal Control. Is she allowed to pass uh, some sure. uh, <laughs> copies <laughs> that we have? I didn't ask to be on the uh, uh, public agenda because I travel a lot and didn't want to commit to Thank something and then not be able to be here, so I just thought I'd share this with you. We've been uh, doing animal control for the last 16 months here, and there have been numerous issues with aggressive dogs, and I thought it was something that you'd want to be aware of with the problems in the township, and I didn't know that the uh, police chief was going to be here, but I'm glad he is because I'm sure uh, he might concur with some of the things that I have to say. I, w I know you're all very positive animal lovers and Mr. Jacobs and I have had numerous talks about some of the issues. Um, one of the most important issues in the township is there have been four since we took over four dog on dog fatal attacks. That's more than all our other townships put together. Um, if you look at our demographics, 26, approximately 26,000 residents versus the amount of dogs that are registered, we're estimating based on other statistics that there's 2,000 dogs not licensed. And many of the dogs that we pick up or that come to the police department are uh, pit bulls or aggressive dogs. Um, there have been two serious dog on dog attacks. From the police department, we've had 27 aggressive urgent dog attacks. And one of the biggest issues is because this was an emergency only contract with no patrol, no daily patrol in town. Sometimes the police don't want to wait for animal control to come because they don't want to wait an hour. And so they end up doing the job themselves. And many of them are great at their job, love animals, try to do the best they can. But when you're dealing with an aggressive dog, we've had three incidents where the dogs have been picked up by police. And we've had to have two officers try to get the dogs out of the car because you can open a car and get an aggressive dog in trying to get it out is another thing so i want you to consider some of the uh, documents that i've put for, forth for you um, i do think this town deserves and needs either a full-time animal control officer whether through the police department or public works or 
uh, either just one or full time, I think it should go to municipal, just as Pleasantville did. Pleasantville, we helped with the process of conversion after uh, they waited for animal control to respond to an aggressive dog. The police ended up shooting the dog, and I think that was the end of, end of the line for animal control as a private contractor. I also don't think if you consider, I'm here now because our contract still goes for another year and a half, but if you're considering either municipal animal control through the police, through public works, or even just hiring a full-time officer here nine to five, Monday through Friday to patrol every day, it's going to take time to plan this and budget for it. And I know um, the former mayor and I had a discussion about that when we first met about the needs of this community. And the, we're not even going into the cat issues, which is even bigger, but the cat issue is not a danger to the residents as these aggressive dogs can be and have been. So I've given you an option of either full-time or part-time with the public works or, or with the police, and we would be happy to help with this conversion because it's, I think, the right thing to do. And maybe you'll have a private contractor as an, as an after hour only, which is what Pleasantville is now doing. Um, if you look at the last page, which is the, the revenue comparison, I'd like you also to consider um, your fees for licensing for dogs. If you look at Waterford Township, which is I've done the most proactive work with dog licensing per resident. They have 10,000 in population. They have 1,166 licensed, and their revenue was 20,000 versus Hamilton Township. I'm seeing a revenue of $55,000 if you had positive animal control patrolling every day, looking for these unlicensed dogs. I, I haven't even calculated how many dogs have come into the police department from since we've started here that they would have that information, but it's an enormous amount of, of dogs that have come in versus the population in our other contracts. So I hope you will consider that and we'd be happy to help in any way with a conversion, but it's something that I think is beneficial and I hope the police department, you know, he'll have some discussion about that as well. Question? Go ahead. Uh, um, is every dog supposed to be registered? Yes, it's state law. It's state law. It's protection yeah. against rabies because rabies is fatal. It's actually a criminal offense. We've taken many people to court for not having licenses, but it's, it's a state law. It's a criminal offense. You mentioned the, the 2,000 licenses. Is that what you said? I'm just curious. How many? Yeah, Hamilton Township has 26,000 residents. The average is basically 10%. So you should have approximately 2,600, you only have 717. And we've been pretty proactive as we could be. Almost every dog that has been picked up that we could follow up with, we followed up with licensing. But you need to, ever since the state did away with the required census, the licenses have dropped. Well, you mentioned dog on dog attacks. Uh, you, you, I didn't hear you say dog on human attacks, though. Is that oh, the bites. Yeah, there's 83 bites that were since 16. Thank you for mentioning that. 83 bites since we took over. That's on the uh, page one. That was from the health department. And that's a lot of bites. That's more than most all our townships put together. Uh, the, dog at the dog bites were 38 for 2017 and 11 for 2018. Um, once a, a, a dog bites another person, do you report that somehow to their insurance company or? No, that's not our, that's not our job. Sure. We just report it to the health department, human bites. And if it's a dog on dog uh, attack, it's just a police report and that's a, that's a civil. It's yeah, a because civil I, I understand that uh, they, if you ha have a dog, a better person coming into your house, that the insurance for your house would be very limited. Is that something you, you know? It's not something we do. The oh, insurance okay. companies have to. Uh, would have to investigate that. I don't, I don't think they, they would have to get it from the health department. Or someone would have to file a claim and then maybe. Yeah, they that. would have to make an OPRA request basically. Yeah. So I don't know if they've ever done that, but probably not. It certainly would be a deterrent for not having a licensed dog and, you know, keeping them safe, keep, keeping your 
companies that is, say. That is true. That is true. A lot of people don't want to license their dogs because they're afraid of that. But now I think uh, a lot of the insurance companies have, le have uh, lightened up the rules on well, that, okay. as I've heard. I think it was State Farm. But in any case, it's the most important reason why you want to have your dog licensed is, number one, if your dog bites someone, you don't have to quarantine the dog for six months, and well, also okay. it protects the person from having to go through rabies, quarant right. quarantine, and they have to go through rabies treatment. So we want every dog in the township we serve and every dog licensed for a protection for the residents, not just mm -hmm. for the dogs. So licensing involves an examination? Licensing right. involves a rabies vaccination that's good through the whole year and then they come to the clerk and they uh, license the dog for that year and then it has to be done every year thereafter. It has to be done every year. Yeah. Every year. Do you have a dog? No. Okay. <laughs> I'm, not sure I, I'm not sure I'd tell you if I did that. <laughs> by a dog. A lot of people don't know that. They think they have a rabies vaccination and they're good. But this is, and it's also important when we return dogs. Like today, we, we had a husky at the police department today. It wasn't on the license list. We could have returned it just like that by looking at the street and the license number and the breed. And the clerk has been great giving us those lists. So we want to help the resident get their pet back without having to pay a reclaim fee at the shelter. You mentioned that it's, it's a criminal offense not to register your dog. It is, is. there a penalty associated with that? Or, or? It is, yes. 500, it can be up to 500, I think 500, 250 to 500. It's different, it's different in every municipality, but it is a criminal offense, and oftentimes people think it's nothing, don't show up, and then they have a warrant issued for their arrest. Have we issued any of those? Does anybody know? No? The police okay. department usually doesn't do it. It's animal control that does it. Some police departments do. Wildwood, they get tired of picking up dogs. They will, they will do it. And so just, that would be you that would do it? That's yeah. us. Yeah. Yep. That's part of the job. Any other they questions? Any else have any questions? All right. Well, thank you for very much for coming and giving us this information. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Michael, <clears throat> do you want to speak? Uh, hi, glad to be back. Um, my name is Michael Doherty. I'm with Blunt Force Consulting. I'm also a member of the Maze Landing Merchants Association. Uh, part of the reason I'm here is, as mentioned, we're having the uh, South Jersey Wine and Food Festival. It's the eighth annual at Lake Lenape Park. And I've been asked by our vice president to come to see if we could get um, some help from the community for volunteers, just to put an announcement out. Um, we're coming up, we have some you know, good people already signed up. We could always use a couple more hands on deck. Uh, I do want to take an opportunity and thank Ms. Martino for her patience with me submitting my first ever uh, paperwork for an event, and Mr. Kurtz for his mentorship through uh, getting this event off the ground. But we're looking for a, at a good event, provided the weather stays solid, where tickets are still on track for where they were last year, which was a solid year. <clears throat> a bit light in the hands. Great. Thank you. Okay. All right. Oh, Thank and you, you asked about a uh, discount. There is. There's a $5 off. Um, if you go to sjwinefestivaltickets.com, use the code Hamilton, you'll have $5 off your ticket up until Gata price. Very Does good. the flower shop offer an extra discount? No. <laughs> you know, I, I think if you buy uh, a dozen roses, he might be able to help. <laughs> oh. I don't I'm not, I don't know. I'm not going to comment on no now comment. The people, Thank you. The people that just come in that don't want to taste and don't drink or anything they don't so charge them anything do they it's a ten dollar ticket for minors and anybody that is designated driver don't want to drink um and i spoke to mr whipcraft at the park we are allowing dogs to come in as long as provided they're on a leash that goes for service dogs or anybody wanting to bring their pet uh, as mr kurtz brought up thanks to the new legislation we could have uh, from the entrance of the park all the way to the beach wine or beverages throughout so we're encouraging people to bring their lawn chairs or their blankets, provided the ground is dry, and listen to the music all day. But you're not encouraging them to bring their own wine. <laughs> no, I'm definitely not encouraging them to bring their own wine. And we the have, dogs. What's that? The, do the dogs have to be licensed? <laughs> <laughs> they left. She left. <laughs> but uh, the I, I thank you guys for your time and, and for listening. And, and Chief, I'd like to grab five seconds of your time if I can. Awesome. Thank you, guys. Thank you. <laughs> Anybody else from the public like to speak?
to close the public portion. Second. second. The motion is second to close the public portion. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed? The ayes have it. Motion to adjourn. Second. second. Motion to adjourn with a second. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Opposed? The ayes have it. Thank you.